Inside story on Warriors basketball. Curry sidestep, Curry drive, Curry flip, Curry good! This is Dubs OT with John Dickinson on KMDR 1045 and 68. Streaming live at twitch.tv slash the sports leader. Right from the corner, back to back threes. Plays back at it. Play with Trace. A pretty good defensive man, Thompson. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Uh, he's hitting the off balance ones, all types of platforms, falling away one foot, doesn't matter. And they close the second quarter. Clay Thompson got 21 and a half. Clay Thompson got 24 and six made threes. He's been a factor. Clay Thompson again. Oh my goodness. Seven of ten. It's almost like he has the NBA record for threes in a game. Oh, he does. That's right. Clay to Trace. Is executed incredibly well. It's an unbelievable. Clay's doing the goggles, and he deserves it. You, you don't see Clay make that pass in his first three or four years. All right, Clay Thompson, huge game. Warriors get the win, and that's six in a row for Golden State. We welcome you in. It's Dubs OT with JD here on KMBR, the sports leader. 808 KMBR is the number. Big night for Clay Thompson. I think we heard every one of his seven threes. We might want to go back and replay all of the ones he hit in Chicago in 2018, uh, as well as uh, the Warriors get it done tonight in Houston. Uh, they effectively end the race for the play-in tournament, uh, tenth spot, uh, as the Warriors come out strong. And Greg Silver earns himself well a, a split, I guess, in the in the beer bet going back to after the game on Tuesday night and from uh, earlier on in the season in the middle of March. Uh, the double or nothing goes in favor of Greg, and uh, yours truly probably should have known better. Uh, with the, the Warriors going up against the Rockets, who they've now beaten 13 consecutive times head-to-head, going back pre-COVID, and should have known that this was going to be a game where Steph came out and was ready, and Clay came out and was ready, and Draymond was snarling, and, and that they would basically outshoot a bunch of freaking turnovers, which threatened them uh, in this game early. It just felt like, God, can they hang on to the ball? Uh, just just hang on to the rock, and if you hang on to the rock, uh, this thing may end up turning into a, a blowout uh, relatively quickly. Uh, and the Warriors, you know, kind of allowed the Rockets because of those turnovers to hang around in the second quarter. Five point game, uh, you know, for a good chunk, five six of the mid to, to latter portion of the second quarter. But then the Warriors with a nine zero run at the end of the first half and it ends up being a 15 point lead for the Warriors at the half. And it was basically cruise control in, in the second half for the Warriors. They would uh, push the lead up beyond 20. Uh, they had three in uh, three players score 20 or more, uh, which is, you know, something that uh, hasn't happened a lot. And you look up tonight, it was Steph clay and trace Jackson Davis with a career-high 20 to go with five boards and four assists. And all in all, it's a good night. Uh, Fatigue, not a factor. Uh, The Warriors basically end the Rockets' play-in tournament hopes by sweeping the season series again and winning 133-110 to in a game that the Rockets never had a lead in. The Warriors jump out. And uh, just a, a big night all around and a purposeful night minus the turnovers for the Warriors. I thought their competitive spirit defensively was there. There were no uh, ill effects of fatigue, which I thought could potentially uh, pose some problems for, for them in this game. And it's you know all in all one of the more buttoned up uh, wins that the Warriors have had, again, aside from the turnovers, which at different points in time threatened, especially in the first half, to, to maybe wreck the whole thing, uh, given uh, how well the Warriors were playing. And the Warriors make threes against the Rockets. 17 threes for Golden State in this one. And you go back through the last six games prior to tonight, and I put this out on Twitter and threads. Warriors had an 8 of 12 first quarter from three-point range, helped them overcome nine turnovers and in the last six before tonight 18 21 17 26 
25 and 24 three-point makes. The Warriors make threes against the Rockets, and they did it again tonight. I thought the Warriors' defensive, uh, you know, they were trying to keep the Rockets off the three-point line, but also out of the paint. You know, the Rockets can can have a tendency to, to thrive in the paint with drives and slashing, and basically, you know, collapsing on drives, trying to challenge threes, but also trying to make the Rockets beat them over the top and and, and essentially challenging them to hit threes and, and not enough Rockets uh, in this game did. And, you know, early on, while the Warriors were 8 of 12, the Rockets were one for their first 10 from three-point range, and that uh, proves to be the difference. So 808 KMBR, the number here is it is Dubs OT with JD here on the Sports Leader. Warriors with their sixth consecutive win. High watermark for them. Uh, on the season now as uh, they continue their winning ways and uh, improve uh, with the six game winning streak to 42 and 34 on to Dallas tomorrow Mavs beat the Hawks tonight uh, so Dallas is firmly right now in the fifth spot in the Western Conference playoff race the Kings got beat in New York and so things are getting a little bit tighter as far as the uh, seven eight nine and ten goes but uh, the one thing that tonight does is the Warriors, uh, basically, we know for sure, uh, all but for sure, that they're going to be playing beyond uh, April the 14th. So, yeah, if you want to join the conversation, uh, 808-KMBR, 415-808-5627, the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line as uh, we get things rolling. And we appreciate everybody uh, rolling in here on YouTube, Twitch, and the Twitter X stream as uh, the Warriors just continue to impress and continue to impress uh, on the road, uh, earning themselves uh, a big, big victory here uh, tonight. Uh, Let's get to Drew Down and Tracy as we get rolling here uh, on Dubs OT here on a Thursday night. Uh, What's going on, Drew Down? Get us tipped off here in this one. Uh, Good evening, J.D., Man, I never seen a team so locked in and so sloppy at the same time in, in that first half. Man, that was that was frustrating to watch. They were cooking on offense when they could actually get a shot up. So yeah, watching them throw the ball around, especially Clay. Man, Clay was cooking, but he had a few turnovers that were just CP three. Every, I mean, it was just it was mind boggling to watch his team throw the ball around. But at the end of the day, you know, they cleaned it up in the second half. But yeah, those turnovers were frustrating. They, they you know they cleaned it up. I think yeah, they were up by fifteen to. to at half and had 15 turnovers, so that's a that's a stat of the night. Um, but uh, yeah, that was just a throwback Splash Brothers game. You know, Clay was in the zone. Uh, Steph Curry. You know, I love the you know I love the Clay and TJD chemistry. TJD just continues to impress, and you know, with him starting at the five and Draymond at the four, just allows Dre to to roam more and play more of that center field free safety role, and not have to worry too much about guarding the rim and, and you know, erasing mistakes when, uh, when they get beat on the perimeter. And I thought, you know, obviously without Sangoon, I thought, you know, Houston really had no inside presence at all. Um, obviously I thought Landale, you know, did a good job on the boards and stuff like that, but he's not much of a threat on offense. He had a couple of dunks, but yeah, they, without Sangoon, I thought they're, you know, they really had no inside presence. So TJD just, he bought out tonight, man. And, and I'm happy to see it. Uh, the bench shipped in, but to me, this, this game was all about the starters, man. It, it was impressive. And I got a little uh, – Tari Eason, that man, he obviously was never around an open flame or a hot stove as a kid because if you play with fire, man, you get burned. So in the words of Chris Brown, how are you going to hate from outside the club? You can't even get in, man. Let's take care of Dallas tomorrow. Go Dubs. Yeah, we'll see. And, you know, tomorrow's going to be a whole different animal. But, uh, again, I, I was really impressed with the energy that the Warriors had, and our guy Greg Silver was all over it uh, on Tuesday. And I, you know, made the bet probably shouldn't have been made and will gladly take the L here uh, as we wind up splitting uh, our two bets over the course of the last couple of weeks. Greg with the, hey, Warriors are going to be super motivated. The Tari Eason stuff, the the end in the rocket stuff, like the energy isn't going to be a factor even going halfway back across the country because they know they're going to have something to play for. I should have known Steph would show up big and Clay would show up big and obviously Draymond would not allow uh, this Warriors team to lose this game with an opportunity, especially when he came out and said it on his podcast that he was looking forward to the opportunity to to basically end the Rockets season again, as the Warriors had done four other times in the playoffs over the course of, of the last decade. So yeah, 
Uh, I should have known better. We'll bring in Greg Silver now. Uh, allow him to uh, accept his flowers, although it's a it's a wash. I mean, it's it, if anything, it's it it's kind of a it's kind of a bummer, right? I mean, you you don't get a beer. You know, you don't have to buy me a beer. Uh, but you know, you you'll take the win. You take the win. No, we both buy each other a beer. How about that? Okay, yeah, there you go. That's another way to play it. Even yeah, good good call there. Uh, but yeah, no, you were all over it. Uh, on on Tuesday night. Just from a motivational standpoint, uh, my concern, and it did play out, I think, in terms of the turnovers uh, a little bit, but my concern for the Warriors in this game was was basically the fact that I just didn't think they'd have a lot of energy uh, based on the road trip and based on you know all of the travel and, and having to work as hard as they did to win the game on Tuesday. But now they were they were dialed again, aside from the turnovers, which I think was careless, but you know they there was a there was a uh, an intensity to the Warriors tonight, and intensity doesn't always mean you're going to shoot well, but it did in this game tonight, and and I do think the Warriors had a uh, a real strong defensive intensity at the beginning and physicality and and forcefulness that's been with them here throughout this entire winning streak. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this was kind of an old school game, right? Where it was like turn back the clock six years if you're the Warriors and you still have the turnover issue that they've always had and never really been quite buttoned up on kind of always bottom 10 in the league, sometimes even bottom two in their heydays of, of playing good basketball. But the three point shooting, the good offensive possessions, uh, getting a lot of assists per field goal made. I think it was 14 assists on 24 field goals in the first half. Got to double check what they ended up with. But this was some old school Warriors basketball. And I know you put this out on social media too. Something about that arena in Houston, these guys will just make shots. Yeah. I I mean, that was the other thing that I underestimated was was the fact that, you know, sometimes when you get in different buildings that you've had some success in or some big moments in, I think we've seen this Warriors team kind of rise to the uh, occasion. And, you know, Oklahoma City's won, Houston's won. I think there's been times in Cleveland, uh, you know, this year, notwithstanding Boston. Uh, obviously, it was a, a train wreck a, a month ago when the Warriors got got blown out there in, in early March. But uh, we've seen the Warriors, you know, play well and, and shoot well. Toronto, you know, they've had some some good big games. In there's just some buildings where they they come out and, and play. Uh, you know, really well. Sacramento, uh, a couple of times more recently, they never really played all that well in Sacramento uh, before. Uh, they they played all of the the great back and forth games that they have really over the course of the the last two years. So yeah, it's an opportunity to basically end the Rockets and you know, good defense, hot shooting, Trace Jackson Davis doing his thing, and you know this team is starting to you know starting to put us down the road toward asking the question of, you know, are they getting hot at the right time? And look, there's still time to go. We'll see what happens tomorrow. And, and, but this thing is set up now, regardless of what happens tomorrow to, you know, have the Warriors be able to bounce back, get a game at home against Utah. And then, you know, the Lakers and catching them are very much in, in play for the Warriors. Yeah. Regulator chiming in, uh, too bad the Warriors don't have any tiebreakers basically against it. Well, they could have a tiebreaker against the Lakers if they beat them coming up next Tuesday. Uh, they would have the tiebreaker against the Lakers. But the interesting thing about tonight is the fact that uh, the Warriors gained ground on Sacramento. And I know we've we've said and I've said, you know, even as recent as Tuesday, I don't think the Warriors are going to be able to, to catch Sacramento. And I still don't uh, just mainly based on the on the tiebreaker. Uh, scenario with, but the Warriors are only two back. But the thing that ha- two back of Sacramento. Here's the thing that happened tonight, though, Greg. And I know you've been all over this as well. The Kings did lose to the Knicks, and the Lakers have won three in a row. So right now, uh, the Warriors are a game and a half still back of the Lakers, and the Warriors can you know beat the Lakers this coming Tuesday. And if they do, they'd have the tiebreaker. So you'd gain a game and you'd have the tiebreaker against the Lakers. But here's the other thing. The Lakers are now only a half game out of Sacramento. Who's currently ninth. I'm sorry. Who's currently eighth, but, but uh, 
at at 12 games over 500 following their loss and they play in Boston tomorrow. So, and we'll see what the Celtics are going to do. They just clinched everything last night, but we've talked so much about the Lakers and and not necessarily Greg as it relates to the Warriors ability to move up because that's not really what I'm uh focused on more than the Lakers may start passing some teams like Sacramento and and potentially the Pelicans and maybe they aren't necessarily going to be the way we could be this is the first time i've had the well what if it's the warriors and the kings in the elimination game in sacramento as the 10-9 matchup which is suddenly uh, and again the kings basically are the opposite of the warriors in the sense that they have the tiebreaker against everybody uh except new orleans the warriors don't have the tiebreaker against anybody except maybe the lakers uh but it, it is getting closer now here with what six games to go and you know tomorrow's going to be key and and you know the benefit of the way that the Warriors were able to get the job done tonight is the fact that they are going to be a little more rested like they didn't really have to exert a lot of energy uh, in this game tonight they were up comfortably by halftime pushed it up close to 20 and the Rockets never really threatened in in the second half and there really wasn't a, a high pace of play or anything like that in the second half either. It was just a lot of fouls, a lot of stoppages. Seemed like there was just a lot of rest in the, in the second half uh, of this one. But with the Warriors basically comfortable and, and in control all the way, which I think gives them a, a shot to come out and be pretty fresh when they come out tomorrow uh, against Dallas. And look, Dallas has basically had the same types of, of travel issues that, that, that the Warriors have had. They were on a long trip came back to Houston to play the Rockets, then went back to California after they had been in Sacramento to play the Warriors. They were back home tonight. So they get the the two consecutive home games tonight and tomorrow and the Warriors with the short trip from Houston to Dallas. So I think it's going to be two pretty tired teams tomorrow. But the one thing the Warriors have been able to show here during this last week and a half in the six game winning streak is the Warriors are grinding now. They're winning Knock down, drag out, physical, impose your will, take advantage of the new rules kinds of games to where they're able to defend at a higher level. And then you trust that they're going to be able to find more offense, believe it or not, in different ways than some of these other teams, as long as the Warriors are able to to defend at the at the level that they've been able to defend at. So all in all, uh, you know, things not quite sure if it's going to matter in terms of seeding uh, moving forward here, but the Warriors are, are again just when it looked like maybe they were going to be done and locked into 10th like like they have one final push in them uh, to maybe do some damage and, and be a threat here uh, come post April 14. So 808 KMBR, the number. It is Dubs OT with JD here on the Sports Leader. Uh, let's go ahead and get back to the phones and Danny in Vancouver is next here on Dubs OT. What's going on tonight, Danny? Hey, Mr. JD. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good to good to hear from you. Always nice to talk to you, my friend. Um, very insightful comments as always. Um, uh, just a few thoughts and I'll have a question for you. Um, I, I, I love your comment about how they're grinding teams now. I, I love that because that, that, I, I, heard, I heard you say that and I thought that's right. They're grinding teams down. It's some of that Warriors defense that, that we, we used to love to watch in the past. Um, I, I also think the emergence of, of, uh, Jackson has been, has been integral to their success. Um, it gives them that, you know, that inside presence, that, that rim protector, the lob threat. He's he's really smart. I think he's a really really clever player, and he's picking up. He seems to be growing every game. You can you can throw cold water on me uh, if you want, but overall, great game. They kind of shot themselves out of trouble. I thought Houston kind of not to take anything away from the Warriors, but they reverted to the mean. Um, you know, just after sort of a, a stretch of eleven games. And you last comment, you, you stole my thunder a little bit because I was thinking exactly the same thing. I thought I was looking at the standings. I thought, could this all line up perfectly for the Warriors? And what I mean is Lakers overtake uh, Sacramento. Um, so Lakers play the Pels. Uh, we play we play Sacramento, which obviously is, a, I think, a much more favorable matchup for the Warriors. And then if the Lakers beat the Pels, we play them. 
and um, and and you know we have a, we have a reasonable chance to to get into the first round of the playoffs. And assuming Denver doesn't end up first, I think you know we we're, we've got some action, as you'd like to say. So, uh, just my thoughts, and uh, look forward to hearing hearing your thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's in play big time. And and look, I'm kind of on record as saying that I I think Sacramento, even without Herder and and Monk, are going to have the ability to to win. Uh, enough games, but their their schedule, the Kings' schedule, is really difficult. Like, and they've and part of the reason I've said that is because they've played pretty well against good teams this year. Even on the road, they've been able to win some games that you might not, you know, pencil them in to win. Uh, and they had a twenty one point lead tonight at, at Madison Square Garden, and then it all fell apart. I mean, there was you know like a just a massive like a forty point almost swing, uh, you know, thirty point swing uh, in that game. And so they go play Boston and I hadn't looked at the injury report for the Celtics. Uh, I would imagine it's probably a little early for them to start resting people. I'll I'll check that during the break, but the Kings play at Boston. They play at Oklahoma city. They come home and play Phoenix and the Pelicans. Like they have some difficult games uh, ahead of them uh, between now and, and the end of, of the season. So, you know, we'll see. Again, they've got the tiebreaker against everybody. The Warriors basically don't have the tiebreaker against anybody. Uh, the Kings have done you know, very well this year uh, in, in division, in conference, and again, head-to-head against a, a lot of these teams, at least earning splits, but having a better conference record than a, a good majority of those teams. And, and they flat out worked the Lakers this year, beat them 4-0 uh, in, in four games head to head in the in the regular season series. A couple other comments just uh off of what Danny had to say. I'm not going to throw uh cold water on the Trace Jackson Davis take at all. And the thing about Trace Jackson Davis, and I was saying this to somebody during the game, Trace Jackson Davis can score. <laughs> like it's not, like Ch- Trace Jackson Davis and and I was thinking of it in the context of Trace Jackson Davis with Draymond and Wiggins and and comparing it to when Kevon Looney would start with Draymond and and with Wiggins and at times how that would become uh you know a, a front line that the teams could really sag off of and the Warriors just would not have enough spacing well Trace Jackson Davis can score at the rim and so he could score on the interior he is an offensive threat even though basically he gets most of his buckets as dunks or layups or putbacks or lobs or, or whatever, uh, he's still a threat to score. And how many times this year have we seen Trace Jackson Davis just get that almost Jonathan Kaminga-like easy 10 to 14 points? It, it's happened a lot, and tonight it was 20. Like Teams just don't account for him, and the Warriors, in the context of everything else that they do offensively, he can get buckets. And look, he's not a guy you're going to dump it down to by any means and let him go to work and try to put moves on or anything like that. But you know, in, in today's NBA, a center that can you know have some capable hands and looks to throw down and, and can you know, get a shot off in and around the rim – uh, and and be effective with his finishing can get you double digits, and that's the difference between you know that that's a huge difference. And you know, when Clay Thompson's shooting it the way Clay Thompson's been shooting it, then you can get away with that. So no, I I think Trace Jackson Davis is a big time threat, and he's allowing Draymond to be more of a force defensively, also, which is I think in turn allowing the Warriors collectively to be more forceful defensively. So. Uh, it really is coming together, and you know one of the things that that we're going to get into a lot here, and we'll see if Jonathan Kaminga does make his return tomorrow. He was supposed to make his return tonight in in Houston, and and basically wasn't you know, went through this morning and just wasn't feeling totally right, and and so the Warriors are keeping him out a, another day here. But you know they're going to have to we're going to have to see what they do as far like I, I I'm. I said it Tuesday. I'm I'm even more convinced of it now. I mean, I think TJD is going to continue to start uh, for the time being, uh, but it's you know they're going to have to look at how much of that combination of TJD and and Draymond Green has been you know why the Warriors have been able to be so successful defensively uh, you know during this this stretch. And some of it has been offensively challenged teams. I mean, let, let's be honest. And the Rockets are a team that 
you know, can be a little offensively challenged. Orlando can be, Miami can be, Charlotte obviously is not a, a great team. Uh, you know, Dallas though is is a really good offensive team, and the Warriors held them to a hundred and really held them under a hundred because they they got a couple of buckets after the game was over. So uh, th- there's something to be said as this sample size grows for the Warriors' ability to defend at more of a playoff level with this group that that they have out there. So and and TJD's been a huge part of it because I, I think he's in some ways unlocked. Draymond and uh, as far as the other part of what of what Danny said yeah I, look the Rockets were not some great team uh, I mean they're going to look up at the end of the year at, at their record and I'm, I'm looking at it right now they're 38 I mean they're even with the three-game losing streak now that they're on to basically be eliminated they're 38 and 38 if the Rockets lost their last six games I think they would have a better season than anybody could have possibly dreamed. I mean, I think people thought they were going to be, they were going to be in the bottom five, like easily. And the truth is they're going to have a nine or they're, they're not, they're actually in their own category. They're basically nine games better than the Utah, Memphis, Portland, San Antonio group. So I, I, you know, I know tonight's a night where, you know, Draymond gets the last laugh and Tari Eason came out in a, Warriors come out and play T-shirt to the bench and Draymond was yelling it at their bench and all of those things as the Warriors were clinching it. The, the Rockets have become an easy foil for the Warriors over the last decade. So have some fun with that, even in this iteration, if you want to. But the reality is, I mean, this this Rockets team was they, they were more just a cute young team that, you know, got hot and made a little bit of a of a run toward the end of March and, and, and the early part of April. And now they're going to fade off into the lottery, which is exactly where they were probably going to be from from the beginning. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, credit to the Warriors for handling business and basically ending it tonight. But, you know, th- this wasn't, uh, you know, some budding rivalry where the Warriors were challenged, although I will say this. I mean, you probably still don't want to poke the uh the ogs you probably still don't want to poke steph and and clay and and draymond i just i i still remember uh was it malik monk in the in the first round series that was he said something about steph looking a little old after game six i think it was in uh in chase center and then steph comes out and puts the the 50 uh on him and and game seven and and ends their season so uh, yeah, you, you still don't want to poke them, and and the Warriors, the OGs, kind of carried the night. The OGs plus TJD, who had a monster game, maybe even a career game, scoring wise, definitely a career game. And Dude, how about four for four free throws? Yeah, I look, he was I, he was terrific, and and that's the thing. Like, he's not a scorer by any means. He's not a scorer, but he can score. And the truth is, Greg, they get a lot of the Kaminga buckets. Like it's again, it, they get him in different ways. It's not like he's standing out there, you know, eighteen feet away and driving like Kaminga does. Uh, but but they're getting rim pressure baskets, which I think you know makes a lot of sense in the context of their offense and is the kind of player that they that they basically haven't had as a big. So all in all, uh, real good, uh, real good game for him and a real strong game. Uh, for the Warriors. All right, let's go ahead and pause here. 808 KNBR is the number to join the conversation. We've got a couple of phone lines open. It is Dubs OT here with JD on KNBR, the sports leader. The Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line is open. Appreciate everybody on YouTube and Twitch as well. We'll get into the YouTube chat. Our question of the night coming up and a lot to get to here for the next hour as the Warriors win. No drama again. In Houston, as they get it done, 133 to 110. It's KMBR 1045 and 680, the sports leader. No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets.
From Chef Curry to CP3, we're repping the Baines team. Dubs OT with John Dickinson now continues. Streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 104.5. Warriors, come out to play! Raymond, and now the blowout is officially on. And there are 20, with four minutes left. Bitter. Save some legs for Dallas for tomorrow, and Ime Udoka's thinking the same thing. You've been regulating this whole game. They're having fun with it now. They're going to sweep the Rockets all three times. Head to Dallas with the longest winning streak in the NBA. Yeah, it's like that. Six in a row for the Warriors. Warriors get the last laugh on Tari Eason. Win tonight. Wire-to-wire victory for Golden State. Did not trail in this one. Jumped out to big leads early. 133-110 to is the final in favor of the Dubs. It's Dubs OT with JD here on KMBR, the sports leader. Yeah, Warriors are up 16-4, to 19-6, to 25-11. to They were hitting everything uh, early on, and... Nine first quarter turnovers, but it doesn't matter when you're eight for 12 from three point range in the first quarter. And uh, the Warriors able to overcome it. And they had this thing on cruise control thanks to a 9 0 run right before the half as the Rockets were kind of hanging around five, six point game. But then the quick 9 0 run, Warriors push it up to 15 and they win uh, by their largest margin of the evening. Uh, by 23, 133 uh, to 110. 808 KNBR, the number to join the conversation via the phone lines. That's 415-808-5627, the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. We appreciate everybody watching on YouTube, Twitch, and the Twitter stream as well at KNBR. Uh, we're going to get to our question of the night coming up here momentarily. Uh, we bring Greg Silver back in as well because Greg told me he had a question he wanted to throw back at me, something we had discussed, what, uh, a couple of nights ago, right? Yeah, a couple of nights ago after the Mavs win. Uh, and the question that I brought up to you, which I kind of threw out there, was if they win this game tonight, which ended up happening, do you maybe consider resting some of your stars on the second end of a back to back? Because there was a world a couple of weeks ago when we're thinking they're not going to have any room to rest anybody. And now they might, but I want to answer my own question and say, absolutely not. No way. Silver terrible idea that you threw out there because when you got things working, which has been so hard to get the machine rolling for the warriors this season, you do not mess that up in any way. If there was a chance you could come into a gym with a team already on their heels and you're playing smooth basketball, you run that thing into the ground. You get every ounce of juice out of this good juju that you got going. I say you do not rest anybody, but maybe some people have a case where they would say otherwise. Yeah, I, I think, and and you know, we were deciding whether we we're going to officially make this our, our question of the night here on, on Dubs OT on, on, uh, KMBR, but uh, you know, I would not now. And I think the way this game played out, in, and the way things sit now currently with the Warriors hot, like you, to me, you don't want to do anything to to curb the momentum that the Warriors have right now. Take your shot in Dallas if you don't have it, and you get you know blown out, or you find yourself in in trouble uh, in Dallas tomorrow. Then you can always call it off early. You can always basically. All right, kind of like the Boston game. Like if it gets ugly and you're getting blown out at any point. Uh, but here, here's why. I, like the Warriors really didn't have to exert a lot of energy in this game in the second half. And look, I know the Warriors are an older team. I, I, I know they're kind of in their own category as far as you know energy and the things that they've been through. And nobody's played as many games really, other than like LeBron. Than, than their big three have over the, the last decade plus in terms of the, the taxing games and the like. But no, I, I think because you have the Utah game Sunday at home, you know that's a game that I, I hate saying this, but that's a game the Warriors should be able to win even without their best effort or even without their most energetic effort. And so like to me, you take your chance tomorrow and you try to get a win because if you can get that win, you know then who knows? Because if you can get that win, then you 
probably get the game Sunday, and then you're really feeling good about going into L.A. and having a chance to, to potentially move up. And, hell, the Lakers are looking at having a chance to, to potentially move up as, as well. And so uh, I would not do that. I think it's too early. I do think if the Warriors get locked into 10th, or look, you know, let's say they even if they win the next two, but they lose to the Lakers in L.A., I don't think you can make a determination as to resting up if you're the Warriors until you get through the Laker game. You have to get through the Laker game and see where you are. And then you've got at Portland, the Pelicans and the Utah Jazz, the final three games with the last two at home on Friday and Sunday. And by all means, if if the Sunday game on the 14th is meaningless and you're locked into 10 at that point, then rest everybody in that game and and make sure that you're ready for uh, what would be a 9-10 matchup. Again, my understanding is the 9-10 matchup is is Wednesday. So the 9-10, you actually get an extra day in the lead up, but you don't have a but you're gonna have to play two games and the second one is going to be with one day off in between. If you're the seven eight, you play quicker, you play Tuesday after Sunday. But then if you lose that game and have to play in the elimination game, you get two days off in between. So the advantages are built in basically for everybody in each tier from 10 to nine. Nine has the advantage over 10. Eight has the advantage, obviously, in seven uh, over the others. So, uh, you know, I, I would not look to rest anybody tomorrow. I would look to keep the, the momentum uh, going uh, if, if you're the Warriors. So 808 KMBR. It's John Dickinson, Dubs OT with JD here on Esports Leader. Our question of the night as the Warriors get the win against the Rockets. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll formally get that out there on social media here in just a moment. I do want to dive into the YouTube chat. A lot of good comments uh, here uh, as the Warriors get the win against the Rockets. Uh, Douglas Mikes. Let's just get this out of the way. TJD should be a starter. The question now is, can Kaminga play with them? Kaminga can play with them. Kaminga can absolutely play with, with TJD. It, what it, it isn't Kaminga, Draymond, and TJD as the three starters. That's what it isn't. Like You can have a front line of Kaminga at the four and TJD at the five. You can have a lineup of Draymond at the four and TJD at the five, and you can have a lineup of Kaminga at the four and Draymond at the five. Like all three of them can play together in pairs. You can't start the three of them together, meaning Kaminga at the three, which the Warriors, again, they just don't view Kaminga as a three, and then Draymond at the four and, and TJD at the five. So the, the question is, Douglas Mikes, uh, yeah, I look. I think TJD is going to continue to start. You got to ride the hot hand. The defense has been dramatically improved. And let's be honest, part of it is Draymond being freed up. Part of it is TJD's just presence as a big. And the other part of it is, and, and this is the so-called rat on the table, Jonathan Kaminga is not a good defender. And he's really not a good team defender. He's He can be a, a pesky on-ball defender at times, but a lot of the overhelping and not being in the right spot and falling asleep and having, you know, people get by like a lot of that is Kaminga. Like he creates breakdowns sometimes defensively to where it can be frustrating. So I, I think, you know, short term Kaminga comes off the bench and then you, you see how it plays out. Uh, and again, the question though is not about like, I don't have any concerns that the, that any of the two of the three can play together, actually all possible combinations of the two. Uh, and, and so, yeah, Kurz, he noted this at the podium. He said it a couple of times in the last couple of days, you know, typically when something's working and somebody's coming back off an injury, he rolls with it. And so I would be surprised if, you know, Kaminga is probably not going to start tomorrow if he's healthy enough to, to play. Uh, but that doesn't mean that by the Laker game or by the Portland game, uh, or sometime between now and the end of the season, Kaminga's back in the starting lineup either if if they feel they need uh, a little bit of a of a of a jolt. Uh, so Tony Smith uh, checking in as well. Kaminga stay on the bench. Kaminga's going to I think he's going to be coming off the bench. But again, the Warriors still are going to need Kaminga. I do think and I hinted at this the other night 
the one thing that the last six games now, basically, or five, five games that they've played without Kaminga, the one thing that I will say is it it does show, it does show that Kaminga's important. Kaminga's not maybe as important like as we all would have thought he was given how well that he had played during really the last two and a half months here before the, before the injury. And so like, I, again, you take a poll of warrior fans here over the, you know, since, Oh, Kamin- if you said, Hey, Kaminga's going to miss five games. I don't care who the warriors are playing. He'd been their number two scorer for the better part of two months. Uh, the Warriors' ability to win every game without, like, I don't think anybody in their anybody in their right mind would have believed that the Warriors would have been able to to play as well as they have without him. And I know there's some some bad teams in there, two of the worst in the league. So I, I don't want to get carried away with it. And I'm not saying by any means that Kaminga is not important, but you know, he's not as important. And you know, at, at times I've kind of thought this, but there's no way to truly prove it that like they, you know, they need his scoring, but there are other times where he does kind of low key hurt him in other areas and it doesn't really get talked about a lot. So, you know, it, it's again, they need him, but, and we had a text here. I wanted to get to as well. This was from the six five Oh, the golden state lumber and building materials text line is TJD showing the warriors that Kaminga is, expendable i don't know I, I i don't know about that but the one thing that we are going to have to think about and the warriors are going to have to think about which is which is going to be interesting is that whole conversation that we've had about getting better and what are the pathways to getting better you know between the end of this season and next season and, you know, I'm on record as saying it's either Kaminga turns into a star or you use Kaminga to bring in a star. And, you know, if the Warriors are able to play at the level that they've played and you do think you want Trace Jackson Davis to be a starting player with Draymond Green and you feel like you've got some action, maybe Clay Thompson's coming back and you figured things out with Wiggins. Again, I'm not giving you the answer to the question. I'm just posing the question. It, you know, maybe that does make Kaminga a little bit more, it, you know, at, you, you would be more comfortable believing that you could move off of. The other thing is, do they go into the offseason? And I've said this, do you go into the offseason and you basically, because of Trace Jackson Davis and Draymond, you basically give Kaminga the project of turning himself into a three. Now that, I don't know, given given the way that, that, the, the Warriors have basically, you know, dealt with him and and, and brought him along uh, to this particular point in time. But uh, short term, I think Kaminga comes off the bench. I I could see him being in the starting lineup again very quickly. Off season wise, though, it is interesting because if you make the determination that you want to play more consistently with the two bigs, then that means Kaminga would have to become a bench player in, in all likelihood. And again, Wiggins is involved in that, but it is not as simple as, Oh, well, Kaminga just takes Wiggins spot and it's Kaminga Draymond and TJD. Like if you think it's that simple, you really haven't been following the warriors in the way that the way that they view Kaminga as a player, but either way, it's a, I think a nice problem to have, to have, more players that, that you think can can help contribute to winning than than fewer. And, you know, two months ago, I don't think we would have known that either Trace Jackson Davis or Kaminga could help the Warriors win at, at the level that they've been able to to help them win. Back to the phones. Philip is next here on the sports leader. Philip in Texas? What's going on tonight, Philip? I'm doing mean, okay. I mean, despite what the war, despite what the Warriors you probably win against H Town, you know. I mean, yeah. What else? H-Town, yeah. Despite H Town's um, uh, multiple attempts to like try to block the war, try to block the Warriors in like you know they tried they were like trailing behind at first in the first quarter, but then the Warriors were like leading ahead, like as they saw when the game. <clears throat> 
was like starting to progress. Warriors were like leading ahead and like the first because like the first shot of the game, the Warriors scored two and then all of a sudden they scored like All right, Philip. Hey Philip, Philip, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it, Philip. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move on from we're gonna move on from Philip. I'm not sure. Philip Philip wasn't exactly putting the putting the phone call together. Yeah, the Warriors, you know, the Rockets were trying to come from behind and the Warriors were up early and then yeah, the Warriors dominated the game. <laughs> I don't know. It was just an odd, uh, odd, 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 odd phone call. Uh, more on the chat. Uh, yeah. Com- How about Judith gonna- rallying everyone to like the video on YouTube? What a, what a cheerleader for us. This isn't the first time she's done that, too. No. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Subscribe, like all of those things are leave comments. All of those things are, are big. And I haven't, uh, I, I probably haven't promoted that enough in that way, but, uh, yeah, definitely do all of those things. Uh, definitely, uh, important. Uh, thank you, Judith. We, we really appreciate it. Judith, one of our regulars and, and we definitely appreciate uh, her. We appreciate everybody here. Uh, a lot of people saying Kaminga needs to come off the bench. Uh, let's see. You know, there is a little bit of a misconception that, that Sacramento is like, like careening. They came into tonight winning six of their last nine and two in a row and four of their last. Like the Kings are not like in a free fall. Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's just other teams have been playing hotter even than they have been. Dallas and Dallas beat them twice. Basically, before tonight, they had lost two. They had lost three of nine, and two of them were to Dallas. So they were really beating everybody. Uh, so it, you know, it's not like they're, but they do have a difficult schedule. But I, I think there's this notion that they're like absolutely falling apart. They're also banged up. They lost Malik Monk and you know, Kevin Herter basically for the season. Monk uh, could come back, but but not until really the beginning of May. They don't. They'd almost have to win a full series without him, which obviously wouldn't be. Wouldn't be likely. Uh, Drew down. JK makes this team better off the bench with CP three. He should be dangerous. Yeah, I agree with that. I I think that's uh, you know there are ways to to I think feature Kaminga to where he can still be really impactful. And and look, I've said it like I you know I don't necessarily think that he has to be getting them twenty. You know, I was saying that when he was getting them twenty regularly. That and I think you know the last week and a half has kind of proved that. Uh, it, it's, but the question for Kaminga has always been, and this is the reality of it. The question for Kaminga and the Warriors have to balance this because Kaminga has been better when it's been 25 minutes and not under that. And so I do think they need to give him enough time to be able to, to do the things that he does. Well, he has struggled fitting his game into a, a lesser box fitting his game into an, a, a 20 minute box. And so I, I think, uh, you know, I, and I agree with Irwin, you know, it'll be interesting what Kerr decides, although I, I think you kind of know Kaminga starting usually gets his motor. Like you do have to factor in Kaminga, not being happy about it. And, you know, maybe that Kaminga is less than a hundred percent would allow him to be, more happy about it and seeing that this team is is winning would allow him to to be more happy about it but but i i think there are plenty of ways that that kaminga can still be to be used gsw vera the question is if kaminga will be okay coming off the bench well he's going to have to be like he yeah he's going to have to be you know draymond come, come come back come off the bench steph's come back in playoff games and come off the bench you know, Clay Thompson reluctant to do it, but Clay Thompson for a good part of a month there was coming off the bench and helping the Warriors. So, like, I get it. Kaminga may not like it, but, you know, it shouldn't become a thing. It really should not. Should not become a thing uh, whatsoever. And so, I, you know, there are plenty of ways to help this team uh, you know, it, it just there are plenty of ways for him to help this team. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, 808 KNBR, uh, CA saying JD, uh, I think you underestimated the hate for the Rockets and Dylan Brooks. I totally did. I totally did. I, I absolutely did. When when I said I thought that the Warriors were, were not going to win this game on, on Tuesday, it, 
it happens. Uh, it was clear within, I don't know, five minutes that the Warriors were going to win this game. Like that, like it, it, and I know the turnovers were, were problematic and let the Rockets believe that they might have a chance if they could get things going. But I, I thought five minutes into the game, oh, the Warriors, are, they're not losing this game. They are not because they make threes against the Rockets. The Rockets don't make threes against them. The Rockets struggle to score uh, when they're not, you know, hitting, when they're not getting to the rim, when they're not getting to the free throw line. And the Warriors were just, again, aside from the turnovers, locked in. And so that was uh, impressive. Uh, CA, halfway to that beer, courtesy of JD, boys. Appreciate that. Uh, Joe H, it's okay, JD, you stayed with the original prediction. Yeah, it's all good. It happens. I mean, there are a bunch of games. Like I, I mean, I people weren't feeling hot about the – this was not an on-air one, but uh, our buddy Austin Scott, who works in the digital department uh, at KMBR, Greg, he, he kind of hit me right before the, the – game on Tuesday at, at chase there in the media section. He's like, all right, what are you thinking? And I said, I think the Warriors are going to win tonight. And so it, like, it kind of works both ways. Like I thought they were going to win against Dallas and then maybe lose tonight or lose the next two. Uh, and you know, Hey, they got them both, which I think, you know, that, that makes everybody, uh, everybody happy. Hey, I'll just uh, say I was happy to be wrong when I took the wrong side of the bed as well. So I, I know how you're feeling right now. It's, it's not a terrible feeling. Yeah, no, it's it's all good. It it is all all good. And again, I don't feel like I'm down anything. Like that was that's why I kind of rolled with the bet, even though I kind of realized after I made it that I was probably in trouble. But you roll with it because it was, you know, I just I'd already won one. I'll give it back. So uh it, it's all good. Um yeah, Douglas Mikes, when when the Warriors had Draymond and Looney as a starting front court, lucky to get double digit points in total from both of them. Uh yeah, they can they they can like TJD has the ability to score, which I think helps it. Dumpster fire Dan. I hope Kerr doesn't feel pressure to start JK again. JK should be coming off the bench. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think Steve's feeling pressure, but Steve also better be smart enough to know, and I think he is, that he's going to have to have a real conversation with him because that kind of thing does matter to Kaminga. Like, it does matter to him as a young player. And so you have to have a real professional conversation with him about it and say, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. has nothing to do with you. You've been great. You're still going to play a lot. And right now we're rolling with with Trace because we've been rolling. Like it's it like to me, it, there doesn't have to be anything dramatic about it, Greg. Like there is, like, it's just, it's just, you roll with it. And oh, by the way, you might be back in there at some point in the next couple of games anyway. So I just don't think it's a huge deal. Yeah. And on top of that, it's like, if you start the same starting lineup and Kaminga's available and he's coming off the bench and the beginning is going so poorly, call timeout and get him in. I don't care if it's two minutes, like do what you got to do. Right. He can be the first sub in. And and that's what we've seen Kerr, you know, do. Now it does impact other things. Uh, but but that is regardless of whether Kaminga starts or doesn't start. Uh, I, it probably affects Moses Moody, maybe a little bit. Uh, it probably affects GP two, who they they've really leaned on GP two more with Kaminga out. Maybe GP two they can try to rest up for, for some of the play in games that they're, that they're going to have to play. Uh, I think that's a, a part of the equation here. Uh, so all in all though, it, again, it, I don't think it's a big deal if Kaminga doesn't start. I think if anything, the Warriors are showing that, that, you know, he, there doesn't have to be as much pressure on Kaminga to perform and score for this team to be able to, to be effective, which again, I think is, is, a positive. I, I think that's uh, the reality of, of the situation. So 808 KMBR uh, is the number. Uh, it's Dubs OT with JD. We still have a couple of phone lines open. If you want to sneak in some calls, we'll we'll do Sounds of Silver coming up as well. As we got a really robust Sounds of Silver. Win. I'm pumped, guys. Okay. Robust Sounds of Silver coming up. More in the YouTube chat as well. Really appreciate everybody watching tonight on YouTube. 
uh, as the Warriors win it. 133 to 110. They're in Dallas tomorrow. It's KMBR 1045 and 680, the sports leader. Did you hear something? Yeah, like a swoosh. Yeah. Dubs OT presents the sounds of silver. 
streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 1045. Steph through the whole rocket defense, and he got a foul. Steph, <laughs> Steph Curry just did exactly what we want to do multiple times, except we have headsets on. He's celebrating. And we're not allowed to do it. And that is Steph is shooting free throws. He's celebrating. And if you wonder if he gets frustrated or it bothers him, uh, I think a picture's worth a thousand words here. Yeah, Steph there getting fouled, going to the line. And yeah, I. I, I don't think anybody would dispute that that it bothers him and and all the conversation around it bothers him. But uh, Steph getting to the line tonight, Warriors get the win, one thirty three to one ten nine for nine at the free throw line for Stephen Curry tonight. Nine of his twenty nine points uh, to lead the way with Clay Thompson. Quiet twenty nine. It felt like for Steph, although he was nine of fourteen overall. Uh, a very loud 29 for Clay Thompson, 7 of 11 from three. Both shot the ball exceptionally well, though. 20 of 29 for Steph and Clay uh, on the night where they score 58 points. And the Warriors also get another 20 from Trace Jackson Davis, and they win and never trail uh, against the Rockets tonight. Now to improve to uh, season high. Over 500 now for the Warriors at uh, eight games over 500, 42 and 34. And uh, that's the most the Warriors have been over 500 since the end of the 2021 22 season. So, two years ago at the end of the year, when the Warriors were obviously much better, 53 and 29. But uh, yeah, never got to that point last year. I think the high mark was at the end of the season last year when they were 44 and 38. 808 KMBR, the numbers still have time to sneak in some phone calls between now and nine o'clock. We'll get back into the YouTube chat as well. Also, the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. But let's uh, bring back in Greg Silver, our Sounds of Silver uh, portion of the program for this Thursday night. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Like I teased before the break, we have kind of a robust Sounds of Silver and a lot of really good cuts tonight. Shout out to our guy, Jacob Violante, in the back doing a lot of this work because tons of post game and everything. But uh, we got a good handful of cuts. I know there's a lot of ones that people are going to be curious about, and I'm kind of deciding where to start. You know, we're going to start with the one that I think everybody's most intrigued by, and it's become the discussion of the near future. This was Steve Kerr when he was asked about the possibility of changing the starting lineup once Jonathan Kaminga came back. Here's what he said. We've established something here for years. Um, If we're playing well, we generally keep the same starting lineup. And I mean, I've kept Steph and Draymond out of the starting lineup when when they've been in that situation. So um, we'll see how we play it. You know, we've got some guys banged up. Wiggs obviously missed the whole fourth. So, you know, we'll see how healthy we are tomorrow and figure out our lineup. But my philosophy is always if if you're if you're playing well, you keep doing the same thing. Interesting there. Not not the part about if we're doing well, you keep doing the same thing. And you knew he would make the point about Steph and Draymond. But uh, did he hint a little bit like maybe there were a few guys that weren't going to play tomorrow? That was sort of my thought uh, without obviously him saying it. Uh, what, what did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting all around. And the reason I wanted to play it is because I wanted to see what you thought of that, knowing that we had a whole discussion about, do you rest anybody? So uh, I don't know. It is to be determined, but I want to play another cut quickly from Kerr just so we can move along here. And this is him talking about the great defense played by Draymond and TJD, kind of fitting into the theme of it all once again. It's a little shorter. The key to the game was our defense. So Trace and Draymond together have changed our our team. I mean, it's pretty dramatic. Just the rim protection, the rebounding that that Trace gives us, what that allows Draymond to do. It's been really fun to watch them together. Trace is, uh, you know, for a rookie, it's um, amazing what he's doing. Wow. Trace and Draymond together have changed our team. I mean, that Steve will lay it out there thick from time to time. But I I think that's also uh, a little bit telling. And the defensive identity that's come along with it, I mean, that's been the thing that has really changed 
over the course of of this last week and a half since they basically have both been in, in the lineup together. And it allows for Draymond to not have to play so much five, which I think frees him up to be more effective. And I also think it frees him up to maybe be less taxed down the down the stretch in 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 some of these games you know the other part of just the the first comment going back to you know would the warriors rest guys tomorrow or not you know it's not only the second of a back to back but it is also a 3 and 4 it is a 4 and 6 it is a a 5 in in what whatever that would be 5 and 8 or yeah i guess 5 and 8 uh and it's you know at this point where basically the Warriors have been going really hard for three weeks straight. That being said, here's, I think, the way we all have to look at it. Like, the Warriors are still very much in in the mix to to, to potentially at least move up to ninth. We, we all, I think, know that and, and could agree with that. But what the Warriors do have to calculate is... How many, it's not just about tomorrow. It's, do you have to win every single game except for like one to, to, to basically get to the point where you can move up. And if you don't think you can get to the point where you can move up, Hey, what's going on copes? What's going on, brother? Good to see you. You want to crack the mic? Let's go. Now I just want to (laughs) go. What's up, man? Uh, yeah, Adam Copeland chiming in on the uh, video stream. Appreciate that, uh, as always. But no, I the, the thing that the Warriors are going to have to balance is, you know, if you think you got to run the table to move up, and that's not realistic, then maybe there is a benefit in taking a, and giving some guys a night off. Like you have to, you can't just go for it if you think, well, we got to win every single game to get it. And when you start getting into some of the tiebreakers. And the like, or or do you give a couple of guys a night off tomorrow and then basically say, okay, well, we've got one game we can lose. We might lose tomorrow's game anyway. We know we're going to have to beat the Lakers if we're going to pass the Lakers. So you pause on tomorrow's game and then say, okay, we're going to run the table for the last five after that. Like, I, I think that's also part of it, right? Um, in, in terms of, and you know, it's not a nationally televised game. So, you know, there are it, it's a rare and, and maybe the only Warriors Mavs games that game that hasn't been. So, you know, you're not beholden to that. This is a game that was on a day that you didn't have a game on the original schedule. Uh, this was supposed to be tonight, the end of a seven game road trip. So, you know, maybe maybe it is an opportunity where you've basically solidified your spot and you do take it a little bit easier tomorrow. Could be Inter- interesting either way. But yeah, as far as the Trace Jackson Davis Draymond comment, that tells me he really likes those two playing together is what it tells me. And again, nice problem to have, but he's got to figure it out. Like there, it's not just a, like there's no excuse of just saying, all right, well, you like the TJD Draymond combination. That's fine. You can start them. You can You can play those guys together a lot. But you have to figure out the best ways to now involve Kaminga and have him be able to be effective in ways that can continue to help this team. And even more interesting on top of that is you don't want to get too much into the battle of pulling Kaminga back and forth on a string, kind of like Moses Moody has had to deal with at times this year. But we've seen how Kaminga has reacted to it even before he hit that breaking point of publicly leaking that he lost faith in Steve Kerr. There were a lot of instances where he voiced his frustration. So going to be really interesting in that regard as well uh, with so little time left in the season and the Warriors having their longest win streak of the entire year. Yeah, no, no doubt. What's up next? Well, we got Trace Jackson Davis talking about elevating his game on the defensive end, keeping the theme with TJD and defense. This is what the rookie had to say after a career night. Blocking shots, um, that's something I've always enjoyed doing. But this year, just having a big emphasis on guarding on the perimeter. And I think that's where the next step in my my game that I want to take and challenge myself to guard some of these guys. And so just proving to myself that I can do it. But yeah, overall, I just think when our team has that defensive-minded um, game plan, um, it's great for us. Yeah, the defensive-minded game plan is where it's at. I think he knows exactly uh, where 
he's going to have to improve to take it to the next level. And that's what it is. And, and honestly, there's a, a pretty good teacher of that on the Warriors right now in terms of a big that gets out on the perimeter and defense. And it's Kevon Looney, who's been really, really, really good at it. Now, body type, I think, has helped Looney. I think the fact that Looney, for the most part of, of growing up, basically was a was a guard or a wing, uh, you know, in high school and, and even in college, having the ability. So I think he's got the the quick feet and and the agility that uh you know not a lot of bigs necessarily have to be able to and he's got the the long arms as well which which really help him be able to to stay with guards uh on the perimeter but he plays the position game extremely well in terms of you know between his man and the basket and you know given enough room to where you don't get blown by but also having enough room to where you can you can challenge if if somebody wants to wants to set you up for a for a deep shot and so yeah i think i think tjd is on the money with the next phase but he's been you know for forget about rookies who can't make an impact the warriors have had two rookies that have made a a a significant impact uh on on this team this season and it's it's tjd and it's it's pajemski to be sure uh what, what else do we have well, we're going to have fun with numbers coming up, but first we need to have fun with Clay Thompson. We got three okay, great good. clays. You know, I love my clay cuts. And the first one is probably the most wholesome of the three, just because you consider the place that clay was in earlier in the season, struggling, bad body language at times, very visibly frustrated and hard on himself. He's talking about the six game win streak. He says it's about having fun. Did I, did I hear fun come out of Clay's mouth? Is what he had to say. Wait, we're having fun. Everyone knows their roles. We know what we got to do to be successful. Our young guys are playing great basketball. They're bought into the system. Uh, Andrew was special those last few road games. He carried us in the fourth. And then above all, we just are having fun and, and trying to put on a show for our, our fans on the road. And we're trying to click at the right time, especially going into the playoffs. All right. That's the that's. That's the tone down. I, I thought, are, are, are we're not going to play Clay flaming the Rockets? Oh, no, 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 no. That? Those are the next two cuts. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. I was like, <laughs> all right. That, that's a nice way to get it rolling. But yeah, I mean, we, we can't bury the lead here. We got no, we just got to make sure we're giving the people what they want to hear. We started simple and wholesome. In fact, this is a good chance for me to, uh, you know, grab, grab my drink and, and pour one out for the Oakland days. Uh, my birth hometown, by the way. And the Houston Rockets, and don't worry, it's it's just an athletic, and I'm keeping it away from the equipment. So no emails going out tomorrow that are going to uh, come right for me, JD. But let's keep it moving on the clay train. First one uh, from the court, and he's talking about the bounce back game that he and Stephen Curry had. Besides, it's always great to get a win in Houston. Ball just found me in rhythm. Steph took over that second half, so great performance, much needed win. And above all, just it was a lot of fun to beat these guys. I know I did a lot of noise and a lot of trolling. So it felt pretty sweet to come in here and get a win. A lot of great history in this building. So that was always fun to do it in Houston. Yep, a lot of great history, a lot of big wins for the Warriors uh, in that in that building. 2018, the game seven of the Western Conference Finals. 2019, the game six of the Western semifinals after Kevin Durant had gone down in, in game five. The Warriors found a way to win game five and then went and ended that series back to back years, ending the Rockets season in that building. Not quite the second round of the playoffs or the Western Conference finals in a game seven, but end the Rockets season, uh, maybe not officially, but uh, all but officially. Definitely, you could tell was on the Warriors' radar from Draymond to clearly Clay, Greg and uh, Steph. I think as well, although Steph is is the one that's probably going to be the quietest about it. Yeah, I think he will be the quietest. I don't think that's saying too much, but you know, Steph has his moments too. Uh, let's get to an even spicier Clay Thompson quote to close out. Sounds of silver. This is Clay Thompson, and if I were, you know, let's just say leading into this one. If I were to say Warriors come out to play, what would Clay Thompson have to say in response to that with me on the bench inactive for the game? 
Yeah, that's pretty lame, especially if you're not even playing. Like, it's one thing if you're playing and you're out there competing and you can back it up, but if you're just going to be trolling from the sideline, like, bro, like, what are we doing? Like, times we talk mess, at least we're out there competing. I'm not going to just, that's all I have to say about that. All right. That's, yeah, good. You know, hey, if you, if you dish it out, you got to be able to take it. And I, I thought, you know, Tari Eason did take it. I mean, he sat there on the bench with his, with his uh, T-shirt on that said said exactly that. Warriors come out to play, uh, and yeah, they got uh, they got it taken to them. I, I thought that was bizarre, just because I mean I know Eason hadn't been playing due to injury, uh, but you know uh, I thought it was also interesting. And, and Greg, you may not have seen this, and forgive me, I've lost the doc here, but uh, we may need to add. So Udoka, Ime Udoka, kind of flamed his own team in the in the post game uh, press conference as well. Uh, in in this sense, and obviously it's a young team. We talked about the the expectations for them, uh, and I'm, I'm going to send it to you, Greg. If you didn't if you didn't see it, hang on, and then we'll maybe we just fire it right off the computer. Uh, we do a little production here on the fly. Uh, I'm going to just text it to you so you can find it there. But yeah, Udoka, uh, kind of not lit into his team, but he, you know, he, he had a little bit of a message about this game. And, and I thought it was, it was something that crossed my mind, uh, at the, at the beginning of the game, just, and this was another one of the things in the long list of things that I probably should have accounted for when making my little beer bet with Greg the other night that the Warriors were going to be, uh, you know, have enough energy uh, as well. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's also, uh, you know, something that, again, I'll admit I, I was on the wrong side of it. It happens. Uh, and yeah, I, I've seen enough of those games in that building when the Warriors have, have played the Rockets uh, in the, in the playoffs to, to where I should have believed Greg that the, uh, trio of Steph, Clay, and Draymond would want to basically put them down uh, one more time. Uh, even completely different players on the on the side of the the, the Rockets. Here, yeah, here's what uh, here's what the always honest Ime Udoka said uh, about his team post game tonight. It, it looked like the moment was too big for a lot of players out there. Mm. So it looked like they're in headlights a little bit. Uh, Either look soft or scared, one or the other, and that's two poor, two bad things for a lot of our guys to have, and uh, didn't rise up to the moment like I thought we would. Wow, and that that has not really been indicative of of the Rockets this year, soft and scared. May, that may, may not always manifest in wins, but the Rockets have been one of the more physical. We're gonna get in your grill and challenge you. We're gonna we're gonna hit you in the mouth. We're not afraid to get in a in a. Uh, uh, maybe even a, an altercation or two. Uh, they really have taken on, I think, both the personality of Udoka, who whose Celtics teams were a lot tougher than, uh, well, I say teams. I guess he only coached them for the one year. But uh, he, he, the Celtics were a lot tougher than the last couple of, of iterations of the Celtics this year and, and last year. Uh, it, and so he he really does preach physicality. And I think you know they've taken on the, the Dylan Brooks uh, type, uh, mentality with the with the way that that they've played this year, they they like to to be able to to grind you uh, a little bit, and you know the Van Vliet type, uh, you know the, those kinds of guys, and so you know I think Jalen Green's got a little bit of that to him. I think Thompson's got a little bit of the, of that to him. Uh, so yeah, they they like to be physical, and they yeah I think they they wrote a check, Greg that that they they couldn't cash uh in this one and and you're right there was nothing they the rockets were they did just kind of cower from the from the beginning the warriors hit them and the rockets had no answer for the for the early punch what i will say to be fair uh, to tari eason especially is like we're laughing about it all night on the show because we can and we haven't had a lot of shows like this that are fun in fact we've had a lot of heartbreaking shows per the clay thompson cut yeah, we've had a lot of losses that have stung this year. A lot of heartbreakers. Uh, we're just having a good time. Like the Rockets, 
have already way overachieved what anyone expected of them. I do think Ime Udoka has done a tremendous job like he did in Boston. And yeah, you know, a little too young and you still poked some old guys that have a lot of pride and aren't quite done yet when it comes to just folding over in a big moment. So yeah, you know, you yeah. don't want to do that. You know, you don't want to do that. And again, in the grand scheme of things, not to do, you know, rockets talk here on KMBR, these sports in the grand scheme of things, I don't really think it matters for them because I don't think they really, you know, they weren't going to be a true threat this year anyway, but I think Udoka is trying to make the point to his young team. It's like, if you poke the bear, you better back it up. And, and, you know, tonight they didn't do that. And, and the Warriors wind up uh, getting uh, the last laugh in this one to the tune of 133 to 110. So it's uh, on to Dallas for the Warriors uh, tomorrow night. And uh, join me tomorrow at Harmonic Brewing in, in Thrive City. Uh, tomorrow is the Giants opener. Uh, Giants opening day. So, of course, we'll have that for you here on KMBR, the sports leader. Can't wait. Uh, 135 first pitch for that one. And then I'm going to head over to Harmonic Brewing in Thrive City. And if you want to stop by and watch the Dubs game with JD at Harmonic, I'm going to be out there, right? Basically at tip off, getting set up. And we're going to have a live edition of Dubs OT with JD right from Harmonic Brewing. Typically, we do this when the Dubs are home. Uh, we're doing it with the Dubs in Dallas tomorrow. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I know the folks at Harmonic are opening up early for, for Giants opening day. And so, yeah, we'll be out there uh, after the Giants game. Pretty, you know, right about 530. I'm going to be out there getting getting set up. So stop in. Say hi if you're coming to the Giants game. Feel free. Pull up a chair. Watch the game with me. And uh, maybe you could be a part of Dubs OT tomorrow uh, with JD here on KMBR, the sports leader. Uh, all right. So, Greg, what do we need to do? Do we have any? Do we have another cut? I'm, I've. No, we are all good on the cut. Steph Curry did okay. end up walking to the podium, but we will uh, we'll get those for another day. OK, so let's let's go ahead and do some fun with numbers. Let's let's go ahead and do it here. Fun, fun with numbers uh, here on, on Dubs OT. This is Dubs OT with JD. Time now for fun. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> with numbers. No, oh, I'm just having fun. On KNBR 104.5 and 60. Streaming live on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. All right. Uh, some fun with numbers as the Warriors won for the 13th consecutive time head to head against the Rockets. Again, that's a streak that goes back prior to the day that everything stopped back in, in March of, of 2020. The Warriors have beaten the Rockets every time they've played since uh, resuming play after COVID in that 2020-2021 season. 13 in a row, they sweep the season series against the Rockets. Three games to none. Now, these two teams playing a couple of times early and then hadn't played since the week of Thanksgiving, but the Warriors are able to get the sweep and uh, their sixth consecutive win of the season, which is the Warriors' longest winning streak uh, of the season as they reach the high water mark of eight games over 500. As uh, the Warriors uh, had a five game winning streak three different times, but this is the first time that Golden State is able to get to sixth some other notes here the win puts the warriors four games up on the rockets now four games up with six to play uh and the tiebreaker so basically and i think kendra andrews did the the math on this so we'll give her credit uh kendra andrews putting it out there that uh basically uh that means the rockets have to gain five games on the warriors in out of the last six. Well, the only way that can happen is if they run the table and the Warriors were to go one and five or the Warriors would go oh and six if the Rockets go five and one. So uh, there's there's two. There's the math on that. Uh, Rockets either run the table with the Warriors winning one or go five and one with the Warriors winning zero. So, uh, yeah, the Warriors uh, all but locking up the ability to play beyond April the 14th. And uh, yeah, some other 
uh, notes as far as that goes as well. Uh, the loss by the Rockets was able to clinch some top 10 spots for some other teams uh, as well. Uh, there was a lengthy list earlier today, and I'll, I'll just get that for you. Dallas uh, got a win tonight, so they've clinched a top 10 seed. The Pelicans clinch a top 10 seed because the Rockets lost. Phoenix clinches a top 10 seed with the Houston loss. And uh, Sacramento needed a win and a Houston loss. They didn't get the win, but the Kings are, are right there on the brink with the one more win or Houston loss as far as them being uh, a top 10 seed. And then the Warriors are, are not too far uh, behind. They need a, they need basically two uh, of the magic number to, to be able to, to clinch that. Uh, so the Warriors in prime position now here heading down the stretch. Uh, Warriors again now. 23 and 10 since January 30th. Uh, the Warriors holding opponents to 100.8 points per game during the six game winning streak. Uh, we talked about clinching a winning record. The Warriors did that tonight with their 42nd win, 38th time in franchise history, 11th time in the last 12 seasons. The only time the Warriors did not have a winning record was the 15 and 50 COVID shortened season back in uh, 2019. 2020 uh the warriors how do you overcome 21 turnovers and 27 points off turnovers when you shoot a season high 58.8 percent from the field and the warriors did that warriors have been very good in the first game of back-to-backs now 12 and 4 and uh the warriors 23 point win was the 11th by at least 20 points for the Warriors this season. Stephen Curry, game high, tying 29, also six boards, six assists. He was just in command in the second half. Some turnover issues maybe in the first half. Uh, and yeah, Steph just uh, controlling things. Him and Clay uh, on the same page. It was kind of a throwback Splash Brothers game with both having 29 points. And it was the 28th 20 point game of the season for Clay Thompson. Uh, 11 of 15, as we talked about, and a career-high night for Trace Jackson Davis. 20 points on 8 of 10, and as Greg mentioned in the first segment, 4 for 4 from the free throw line. It's the first 20-point game for Trace Jackson Davis. What? Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga, uh, the bilateral knee tendinitis. It looked like he was going to play. Sounds like he's going to play tomorrow. At least that's the hope. Uh, he missed his fifth fifth consecutive game and sixth on the season, and the Warriors are six and zero in the six games that Jonathan Kaminga has not played this season. Uh, Greg, if I missed anything, apologies. I know you were sending me a couple of things here between now and the end. Yeah, no, I, I think we're I think we're all caught up on the on everything you sent. So, final uh, minute or two here. Uh, as we reach the, the top of the nine o'clock hour and uh, we've been rolling here for longer than 90 minutes and uh, we really appreciate everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, some final comments, final, final comments uh, from, from the YouTube chat. I know it was a, uh, it, it was a, an active YouTube chat tonight, a lot of back and forth, which uh, I, I enjoy uh, among the regulars tonight. Not confirmed, but we may see a Greg Silver at Harmonic Brewing appearance before the end of the season on a on a specific oh. date that we're working on. So okay, that, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Uh, we are we are we are working on that. And other than that, six in a row, JD. The whole time we've been doing this show, we haven't had a streak like it. So this is new territory. Feels good. No, it, it, I mean, they're figuring it out at the right time. And it, it's funny to think back to post Minnesota going back a couple of weeks ago in Minnesota, how frustrating it was and how basically it seemed like it was 10 seat or bust. It still may be 10 seat or bust for the Warriors. We'll see how things play out. Uh, but uh, yeah, I agree with Ed Botello, uh in the chat who says tomorrow seems like a game where, uh, Players will rest if it gets out of hand early. <laughs> I think that's absolutely, uh, absolutely correct. But I do think the Warriors are in a position where they need to 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 play it out at least through the game Tuesday uh, in in LA, and then you look up at the end of there and and you see 
uh, what it what it looks like uh, from from that particular point in time. Thanks to everybody uh, in the YouTube chat, Joe H, Queens of Noise, uh, Irwin Kwong, Drew Down. There was a couple of debates that uh, tonight debates over uh, a lot of Pajemski back and forth uh, tonight in the in the YouTube chat. A lot of people debating Pajemski and and his impact and, and all of that. Uh, and a lot of people uh, debating the starting lineup, which I know is a, a big conversation uh, as far as, you know, who's going to start and all that uh, moving forward uh, tomorrow. Uh, people say a couple of people saying Kaminga is a three. Kaminga is not a three. Kaminga is not a three. <laughs> people still think Kaminga is a three. I, I still see that from time to time a lot where it's like, we'll just put Kaminga in for Wiggins. It's like, have you not been watching? Like maybe next year. I don't think so, but 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 maybe next year. Uh, and you know, again, he's got a lot of improvement to do if he if he's going to to be a three. Uh, disagree wholeheartedly with uh, Kendall Porter. Better three than a four. No, he has been one. He has one hundred percent been a four. Really, all three years uh, of his career with the Warriors, he's he's been uh, a four. Uh, and so, yeah, well, again, I, I'm not going to write it off, but I think the success that Kaminga has had this year only makes it more likely that they would continue to want to have him be a four uh, moving forward into into future years. So, all right. Thanks to Judith Pierre as well. San Jose Jazz fan, the third, everybody in the YouTube chat for Greg. I'm JD. Uh, who else was helping out tonight uh, in, in studio? Jacob Violante. Jacob Violante. Yeah, Jacob's one of the best. Uh, he was uh, along for the ride on the uh, sports phone post game Giants uh, Monday edition when when the power went out. Uh, so yeah, really he he helped get me through that uh, when when the power went out. We had a little radio only version of the uh, sports phone post Giants game edition. Looking forward to doing another one of those coming up on Monday. But we got dubs tomorrow. We've got just dubs again on Saturday. We've got more Warriors basketball on Sunday. These games are coming fast and furious and a big week here now with, what, 10 days to go before the end of the regular season. All right, thanks to everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow from Harmonic Brewing. Dubs OT with JD KMBR 104.5 and 680, the sports leader. Warriors, come out to play! Yeah, that's pretty lame, especially if you're not even playing. Play Thompson again! Oh my goodness. Seven of ten. It's almost like he has the NBA record for threes in a game. Oh, he does. That's right. That's just like making a game winner. Absolutely lit. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put the entire country of France in the basket. Take that eight foot Wingsman with you. Some days I think about like homework in school, but then, you know, I got to look and then I don't have it. I love it. I love it. I love that guy so much. But Grant Williams got to stop it. Draymond is like fish sauce. Big fat dub. I don't give a damn about the Rockets.